boom we back i got two 04 pros here both in two different types of quads and honestly these quads have been amazing to fly so i wanted to make a video today talking about these two builds and then also link everything down in the description so you guys can build these uh, quads out if you're interested or you want to find the links to things as well as like the 3d printed files and everything like that that'll all be down in the description shout out to again murders fpv for another inspiration on this build specifically this is a quad mula quad mula siren f3 split i also got a little bit of inspiration from uh, i apologize if i'm butchering your name but i think it's mangrel or mongrel he's another dope pilot within the community and everything and he also has an f3 split build by quad mula, by quad mula i can never say the name right the first time but he has a build with this frame as well uh, he was actually the first person i seen put an 04 pro into this frame it was kind of those two combined that ended up you know getting me into this and this is the pavo 20 which you guys can see right there it has the 04 pro in it and you can see on the top there that is a 3d printed mount for it that is holding the 04 pro and the antennas in the back there yeah, so I sent the 3D printed files over to Dylan and he was able to print it out. And in fact, I actually have, he made me multiple ones. The, the file works perfectly. Everything uh, mounts up good. So here is, I don't know if you can see this or not. My face is like in it. There's holes in there basically for the screws to go into. And the problem that came out with the 3D printed files, the holes were too small to actually thread into the screws. So what I ended up doing is just taking the, the thinnest tip on the soldering iron that I have and uh, kind of just heating it up and then just kind of touching into the hole and letting it melt and then the thread was able to actually uh, catch and lock from that point. The camera itself doesn't actually sit out too far um, or it doesn't sit out over the ducts so if I hit something the ducts are actually taking most of the brunt impact. No jello issues or anything like that. I think hard mounting the 04 Pro has been a better uh, solution than like soft mounting it. I've seen people run into issues soft, more, soft mounting um, not only the 04 Pro but the 04 Lite. Um, but if you just crank that thing down in there and it just doesn't have any room to wiggle or move or vibrate or anything like that, then in, uh, most of the time you kind of avoid the jello issues. So because the 04 Pro is so close to the Action 4, um, basically in quality, and it kind of eliminates the need for an action camera, which has been a huge, huge benefit, especially for doing interior fly throughs where you want the smallest drone possible. And that's where this thing has come in to like become a game changer for me. Um, as far as like job related fly throughs and stuff before I was trying to always, you know, get the naked GoPro on the 25 and then like, you know, be real careful flying a 25 in like tight spaces and stuff. But this thing is so easy to fly and the image quality that it produces is so good that it matches the action four. I basically don't have to, you know, worry about trying to carry a naked GoPro or anything like that as with this quad. When I had the O3 in here, I basically didn't fly this at all. I would fly it as a tester, um, the test signal and range and, uh, you know, to do like uh, tester runs and stuff like that. Uh, but other than that, I never used it. And now this is arguably like, I don't even really want to fly it around today because I mean, I'll take it up for a flight just for you guys. But like, there's really no reason to do it because I don't want to damage it because it it's such a good job drone so you can find files online for the pavo 20 pro um as well as the original pico like the original pavo pico and this is the pavo 20 like base like not the pavo 20 pro but the pavo 20 base and it was a little bit hard to find the stl files for the pavo 20 base but i was able to find them so again link in the description for these um the only other thing that you have to do and this it, again this is if you choose to rock the uh basic antennas in the back there the stock ones that it comes with. There's plastic that surrounds, you know, the back of the antennas here and it's hard plastic. And I kind of had to like scrape and cut that off in order to actually get the antennas small enough so they wouldn't stick up so high off the drone. You can see the foot pro profile is pretty low, but if I fly, you know, try to fly through something, the back of this can hit and before they were sticking like up here. This is the Siren F3 split build that I have going on here. For parts, flight controller and stack is the iFlight Mini Blitz F7. I'm rocking the GEP RC dual diversity receiver in there, the 2.4 gigahertz receiver in there, and I have the antenna, one antenna in front, one antenna in the back. The motors, I'm rocking the T-Motor Pacer uh, 1604. These are a little bit, I think, like beefy for this quad, I and mean, I'm running 6S on this, so I wanted a little bit, you know, stronger of a motor. I don't think I'm just running, rocking like normal three inch props, so. Pretty basic, pretty much easy to build. The only issue that I really ran into with fitting this stack into this frame was the fact that the, the Mini F7 has a capacitor that is like on the bottom of the board 
for the way that you have to mount this in order to get not only the connector cable to plug into uh, the flight controller and the ESC, but if you mount the ESC upside down, it causes issues with plugging in the flight controller. And then if you mount it the correct way with the right side up, the capacitor is in there and it causes the eat the, the whole stack to basically, if this is the bottom of the frame, the whole stack sits in there like that because the capacitor is back here, like kind of flat up against the bottom. I think I have some phone recordings um, that I'll overlay and kind of show what I was running into. So if I put the ESC on the bottom of here, pretty much the only way it can go is sitting like this. And if I put the flight controller on top, you see these wires hit the capacitor, unless I flip it around, which again, now I'm running into, it'll just barely fit. Like I have to like squeeze that in there and scratch that. But then the same problem runs in is that's the flight controller plug-in and this it's over here. So this ESC is very stupid, but I was able to get the, the cap off of there. So so I think I got it. We got spacers in between there. Some more like another set of rubber spacers right there in the middle. So it gives us enough clearance that everything sits flat. I ended up calling Dylan and like checking with him first before I ended up doing it. But I you just break the capacitor off. You can literally just snap it off and then it goes into there. And then I ended up soldering on um, a bigger capacitor onto the battery lead itself in order to still have my capacitors. That was the main thing that I ran into as far as like issues building this. Otherwise, everything else fit in here perfectly fine. I also had to get 3D printed mounts for the camera up front. I found those STL files online. Again, link in the description. I'll put those down below. Those are a little bit finicky trying to get into there, but they fit into the frame and I got it snug down tight enough that I don't really see any jello or anything like that. As far as the camera sticking out, the camera does stick out. I don't know if you guys can see right there. So you can see from the actual standoff right here to the to the camera, like there's it comes out a good good bit of ways. So so you do pose a threat in damaging the camera right now with the way this frame is. And I kind of knew that going in. The way that I fly this, I kind of fly it like I do freestyle, but I do more kind of cinematic like flow style type of flying with this. And then I also use this for like building diving and stuff like that, where I don't want to fly a giant quad and you know, I need to be a little bit more low key. I haven't officially weighed this, but I believe with certain batteries, you can get this sub 250. I'm going to get this thing plugged in. Uh, I'll get a couple of test flights up in the air and then that'll be that. Again, if you guys have these drones or you have the O4 Pro or if you have uh, quad mula frames or anything like that and you're wondering, will the O4 Pro fit into an F3? It does. Um, I know they have their new SP or whatever frame that just came out recently, and it's specifically made for the O4 Pro, but that's only a two and a half inch. I wanted something that was a little bit bigger, um, can handle the wind just a little bit more. And then if you have the Pavo Pico, this drone's been out for a while, and you're wondering, okay, can I put the O4 Pro into it, not just the light? Like I know they have the Femto out or whatever. It's supposed to be like this with the O4 light in it. But if you want to put the O4 Pro into that and turn that into a true like cinematic beast that is a tiny drone, then you definitely can. I'm gonna get up in the air because I'm freezing. Okay. And we're out. Yeah, this thing is beautiful. Such a such a good drone. The nice thing about the F3 is it flies so smooth. Quad Mula makes really, really great frames. And uh, they always feel like, even this feels like a five inch, like it handles like a five inch. Oop, try to get too smooth. <laughs> but yeah, it handles like a five inch, honestly. And like, it's a three inch, so. Oop, dead smacked into that tree. All right, hold on, I'm gonna bring her back. Hope I didn't just severely ruin this on the first video I make about it. Oh, please. Of course, I lost the ND filter, so there's that. The camera isn't cracked, so that's good. All right, so we're good. I just lost the ND filter. Ugh, let me see if I can find this ND filter. Let me give this about 30 seconds. <laughs> I don't find it. I'm not that mad because these filters are like garbage. Oh well, I'm giving up. <laughs>
it's gone. And I'll probably end up seeing it on the way out of here to the watch. It is what it is. I can barely feel my fingers. Not that that's an excuse for me being a poopy pilot. Some days you just have it and some days you don't. But <laughs> apparently today I don't have it and I'm just beating this thing up. Uh, durability test, it clearly passes it. <laughs> at least somewhat so i mean i'm not bando bashing it but it can hit a tree and survive so all right i'm gonna fly the the pico because i i can't my ego can't let it go but all right so we end up flying the pico anyway <laughs> Up in my garment, feeling no shame. Sun is up and making me feel whole again. Me, myself, and I play in the right game. Take your hesitations, kick it like a ball. Use your intuition, start with something small. Jump into the water, ride a roller coaster, listen closer. Take off all your buses, that's it. Nice soft landing. All right, guys, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Again, links down below for everything in both of these builds, um, all the 3D parts, all the parts in general, down in the description below. Again, shout out to Martyrs FPV and Mangrel, or Mongrel, sorry if I'm butchering your name again, uh, for inspiration on F3 build. And uh, yeah, happy flying. Go and get you guys some 04 Pros, throw them in your builds. I'm telling you, amazing, amazing investment, 100% worth it. And uh, yeah, so catch you guys on the next one.